What's going on folks, Jerem Adrian here, welcome back to the channel for another MMO news drop video. Let's get straight to it, beginning with Sega's Fantasy Star Online 2. At the Xbox Game Showcase that happened this past week, Sega announced a brand new standalone game called Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. There was a lot of debate and confusion in the hours following its reveal, but thankfully the studio has now clarified what it is, so here are some details. New Genesis is most definitely an entirely new free-to-play MMORPG that's not an add-on, nor is it a replacement of the original game that only recently launched in North America. New Genesis takes place a thousand years after the events of PSO2 and will use a new graphics engine and a revised combat system. Its open field map is widely different as well, with previews likening it more to a Monster Hunter World type playfield. Most important of all is that players can take their PSO2 characters with them to the new game, but must leave behind experience, currency, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're looking for a 2021 release date for Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis in North America, but once again, no word on a global launch. Check out the 4K information trailer with the link down in the pinned comment, and let me know if you folks are excited about this one. Next up, good news for you folks who've been waiting on a Final Fantasy XIV sale because there's one going on right now. Until the 19th of August, the Shadowbringers expansion, both standard and digital collector's editions, are 50% off on the Square Enix store and the PlayStation store. That puts the standard edition for the PC down to 20 US dollars, and if you've not played Shadowbringers, I highly recommend it. It's perhaps my favorite MMO expansion released in 2019 and totally worth the money. The complete edition with the base game and all expansions on PC is not that far off, being 50% off as well and coming in at 30 US dollars. Good week for Final Fantasy XIV overall as they've announced some great news regarding the upcoming patch which you can watch in my previous new drop video like a reworked free trial and then there's news of the game hitting 20 million registered users all in the space of 7 days. Links to the sales are down below. Let's move on to a quick PSA for World of Warcraft. Blizzard this past week has released an official post on the forums that lists the items, mounts, and other stuff that's going away when the upcoming Shadowlands expansion goes live. These include the Uncorrupted Voidwing mount and its associated quest, and the Mighty Caravan Brutosaur, which for those that don't know is a dinosaur mount with a mobile auction house, and it costs 5 million gold. Some of these, like the Brutosaur, won't be gone forever, but made accessible via different methods. And Wowhead's got the full detail on all the items and how to grab them pre and post Shadowlands, so go check it out and get to work if you need to start collecting them. Up next, ArenaNet has posted a preview article about the upcoming Guild Wars 2 episode Jormag Rising, specifically about the new meta event finale that takes place in the Frost Citadel. To summarize it for you Guild Wars 2 players, the studio is adding on to the world vs world push and pull feel by adding several layers of complex gameplay design, pacing changes and more, which will make the new meta even more interesting. The meta in the Frostscape utilizes instant-style planning to offer cinematic moments as well as the opportunity to throw a curveball at the player blob depending on what the behavior is, which offers more roles and on-the-fly tactical changes throughout the event, and that's just for the first part. The real finale is a fight with the Claw of Jormag, which is a multi-phase battle with all new mechanics and I for one am looking forward to it. Link to the article can be found down below. Moving on now, and for those that missed it, Black Desert Online has announced a collaboration event with Cursed, a brand new Netflix show that debuted on the 17th of July. The event, which appears to involve a crossover in-game meeting with the Cursed main character Nemu, will begin on the 29th of July, and more details about what exactly is going on should be coming out in the next few days. As for Cursed, the show is a reimagining of the Arthurian legend told through the eyes of Nimu, a teenage heroine with a mysterious gift who is destined to become the Lady of the Lake. Not sure what to make of this, but BDO and Netflix? Never thought I'd see anything like this. Elsewhere, the Tinkerfest has returned on classic MMORPG EverQuest 2, and all players can take part in this gnomish celebration until Thursday, 5th of August. This year, there are brand new items and craftables, and you'll be able to browse the selection by visiting the Tinkerfest merchant in Myron in the Gnomeland Security. Players will also find a new trade skill recipe book called a Tinkerfest Blueprints 12.0, amongst other gnomish rewards. 
In the mobile MMO section, there's news for Moo Origin for those that do play it, and its developers and publishers WebZen has released the latest 14.0 update and are celebrating the game's fourth anniversary. There's a new nobility system in game to go check out, which enhances reverse effects, and it unlocks once a player's reverse reaches level 30. On top of that, there's all new nobility equipment to loot in new nobility dungeons, which consists of bosses with different properties than usual. As for the anniversary event, it's already started and all players will get a chance to earn unique items, wing costumes, titles, and more. Right, so let's wrap this up with the not-so-MMO section now and talk about a brand new open-world multiplayer game set in a medieval setting known as Blood Oath, When the Sword Rises, from Studio Distortion Games. The studio has just launched its Kickstarter, seeking some 170,000 US dollars for a game where everyone can do anything as they please, from crafting to ruling a kingdom with immersive politics or leading troops into fast-paced close combat action with customizable animations that can change your combat style and strategy in servers with up to a thousand other players. On the surface, it sounds ordinary, but this sandbox sounding game goes a lot deeper. Within its two proposed modes of free mode and arcade, you can dabble in some town building, you can marry other players' sons and daughters to forge alliances, and so much more. And just to be clear, nowhere on the Kickstarter page does it mention the word MMO, but from the description of features, it falls into my category of coverage, so here we are. It's an interesting prospect. So if you want to check out the Kickstarter page and back the project, I've put the web link down in the pinned comment. And that's all I've got for now, folks. As usual, if there's news for a game you play which isn't covered here in this video, hey, sharing is caring, so spill the details with the rest of us down in the comments. Hit the like button for the love of MMOs, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I've got news, reviews, all that good stuff. Don't forget to click on the bell icon, which notifies you whenever a new video is up. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian, and I thank you for watching.